you, you would be surprised how many people end up coming to Caring Medical and they have the diagnosis of thoracic outlet and they don't have it. So I wanna, I know it's a weird way to talk about thoracic outlet, but just realize thoracic outlet is very, very rare. It's very, very rare. Technically what's supposed to happen is you raise your arm, so you raise your arm, and then your pulse goes down, like the uh, strength of your pulse goes down, and then you start getting numbness down your arm. Like in other words, your thoracic outlet, something is correct, is compressing your thoracic outlet. So basically your thoracic arm outlet is underneath your arm, like your armpit, and then that's where all the nerves go to your hand and down your arm. So there are some people who have thoracic outlet syndrome because they have an extra rib or they have some extra tissue or they're very, very hunched over. Like as we get older, we get very, very hunched over, which compresses the thoracic outlet. And then the thoracic outlet starts pinching on some nerves. Like there, there's some nerve roots that go down to this side of the hand by the little finger and the, uh, sec or the, the ring finger. So when you raise your arm, then it can pinch that and then you get numbness. So most of the time when people come to see me, they don't have that symptom. They got some odd kind of arm pain, hand pain. You know, they might have some nummy feelings. They might have some nummy feelings. Not true numbness. So in other words, when you check for sensation of the hand by the ring finger and the little finger, they can feel everything fine, but it just kind of feels kind of numb. Numbiness, what I just described, not a true numbness, but a nummy feeling, that's a ligament issue. So there's ligaments that will refer a numb feeling down the arm or pain down the arm. That's normally the lower neck, the inferior uh, cervical area like C6, C7, T1, that area down here. The shoulder joint can do it. It's very common in the elbow. So a lot of times I'll just poke on the ulnar collateral ligament here and then they'll get the pain down the arm, and especially if people type a lot. If, you have, if you've been diagnosed with thoracic outlet syndrome and you type a lot, it's most likely gonna be an elbow problem versus a, because you know, typing wouldn't, as, wouldn't really compress a thoracic outlet, but it puts a lot of strain on your elbow because you gotta keep your wrist up when you type. So that long term can put a lot of strain on your elbow. So just know that if you have thoracic outlet syndrome, Normally, you would get an x-ray or an MRI or a CT scan to make, see if you have an extra rib. So there's rare instances where you actually do have to have that rib removed. But more commonly than not, you have some other issue causing the symptoms. And the most common things are going to be the elbow number one, shoulder number two, neck number three. So the three conditions that can simulate thoracic outlet is going to be instability of the elbow, injury to the ulnar collateral ligament. Second most common thing is you have shoulder instability. You have shoulder instability, so that's causing some movement of your humerus, and it's causing a referral pain down your arm that simulates thoracic outlet. And the third thing, especially if you've got clicking of your neck, if you have clicking of your neck and then you have pain and or numbness down the arm, you know, you have cervical instability. The best treatment for elbow instability, ligament injury, shoulder instability, ligament injury, or neck uh, instability uh, uh, with ligament injury is gonna be prolotherapy. Prolotherapy by tightening the ligaments uh, will re not only resolve the local pain, but also the referral pain and numbness. Now, if somebody wanted to increase the space of the thoracic outlet, so what I'm going to tell you is some pretty amazing things, okay? So assuming that a person has a normal shoulder joint, if you want to increase the space of the thoracic outlet, beside doing scapular stabilization exercises, which are exercises that cause your shoulder blade to go back, probably the easiest way is to hang on a bar. So in other words, you hang on a bar. Think about it. If you hang on a bar, instead of you getting all crunched over, which, you know, when I do prolotherapy, I'm crunched over. When we type, we're crunched over. When we use our little smartphones, we're all crunched over. So all that stuff narrows the thoracic outlet. If you want to increase the thoracic outlet, what you do is you do scapular stabilization exercises that bring the scapula back. You do the backstroke in swimming. 
But honestly, the very best thing is you hang. So you hang with your palms forward. You hang just on a bar or on a tree limb or whatever. You know, don't get sharp pain in your shoulder. Make sure your shoulder is good enough to do that. But you hang for 20 seconds, give or take 10 seconds, take a break. Do that five times. Do that every day. And I'm just telling you, it's going to open up the space of the thoracic outlet. So even if you're, you don't need prolotherapy, just know that most cases of thoracic outlet, there's an easy solution to it. If you have shoulder instability, elbow instability, neck instability, normally it's four visits to get rid of the instability with prolotherapy. Normally I would see somebody once a month, every four to six weeks for about four visits, and often it's curative. 